Hey, my name is Leo. I'm a developer at the Helpful Here team and here to help you master the awesome platform HubSpot. In today's video, I'm going to show you how we could build a custom module and how we could make um, our own functionality uh, to our own website. So here's the custom module I'm going to show you how to build in this tutorial. So you can see here we got an image and some rich text editor and a background color. So I'm going to show you how we could actually, you see here, um, create these input fields where we can actually um, replace the content of uh, our module. You can see there that it replaces it. And also how we could um, write our own text here and make it in real time change in our um, CMS and also how to change the background color. So for example, we could press maybe orange and it changes there. So this is super helpful because sometimes you need to create your own functionality to your website that isn't available in the normal um, HubSpot um, uh, modules. So this is a great way to create a more personal and more customizable um, uh, yeah, modules for your website. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do before creating our custom module is to actually create a file. So you need to be logged into your HubSpot account as I am now. I'm currently logged into the Clean Pro account. Then just navigate here up to marketing, then to files and templates, and then the sign tools. In here, you can just quickly uh, press on the file up here to create a new file, press new file. And then here, of course, we will press module, but you could also change um, or set some other file types, but to create a specific um, custom module, we need to press module. Perfect. So now we get to set some options for a custom module. So first we get to set where it will be accessible. So I want my custom module to be accessible on pages and uh, yeah, only pages. I don't want it for blog posts, emails or anything yeah, like that. And here we can set if we want a local module or global module. So usually local module is the best, but if you want to build a module that, that is will be have a similar look across all your pages, something like a header or footer that you want to be, you edit it once and it will be kind of, and um, those changes will be um, changes across your entire website, then I um, recommend using global module. But for a normal module that you will maybe use sometimes and edit differently across pages or use multiple times on the same page, then just use local module. And then here we can give it a name, so I will just name it custom module creative name, I know, module, perfect. Then just press create. Perfect, now we created our custom um, or our first custom module. So let's go over the structure of the file. So the first area we need to focus on when building a module is this sidebar here. This is where we could create, you know, our input fields and the label for the module and connect other third party libraries to it but we won't do that in this video. I'll show you quickly how we can give a label and how we could create those input fields you saw in the beginning, that image, rich text editor and background color. So let's start off with giving a label. So I will just uh, write custom module. Perfect. And this label will be um, what you can see in the CMS later when we drag in the module. Under here on the fields, here um, is where we can add our um, input fields, such as the image. So we just press add field. Then you can search on the type. So the image, I want to have an image. So we can just write image, press there, and then just give it a name. So for example, if you had multiple images in your uh, custom module, you might want to add um, one image for background image. You can name that background image. Or one image is that is for, um, uh, you know, team worker card where you want the um, kind of, you know, person image there. You, you, then you could have like um, a co-worker image. You, you, you could name this whatever you want, but I will just name this image. And here is just the variable name. So this is what we will use to refer to this variable in our code later. So just keep this simple so our code doesn't get super long. And here we could set the default image. So I will just set these waves. Great. There, that's, that's it, that's all we need for the image. We don't need to write anything more. That's uh, a little takes to create um, an input field for a custom module. So let's go over now to create the, the rich text editor. So just press rich text. 
And you can see we also have this normal text, um, but that's just a single line text and I want to be able to change the font and have multiple lines and all that good, good stuff. So I will um, use the rich te text editor. Great. And um, the variable name can just be rich text. Then here we could add some default rich text we I want for the module. So I will just write first a heading one, then the uh, best uh, module. module. Perfect, that's good enough. Perfect. So now we created the image and the rich text editor. Let's now create our own um, background color. So then just search color. And then here we could just set the name to uh, background color. Great. And now we could just set an EM variable name. So to keep this short, I will to keep this short, I will name it BG color. And then we can set some default colors. So for example, I could set kind of a soup very light gray color just to keep it simple. Um, perfect. That was actually it. Now we created the image, the rich text editor, and the background color. So now let's see how we could actually create the HTML. And writing the HTML and the CSS um, will take a couple of minutes. So just let me just do that really quickly. And uh, yeah, I won't go over everything um, I do in the HTML. I will mainly go over how we could use these values from the input fields in our code. But uh, I hope you know some HTML before this tutorial. So let's get started coding. There, now I've written some simple boilerplate um, code for a custom module. So let's just quickly go over what I've done. So I just created some, um, some main container, a row, you know, for our, that you saw in the beginning, like kind of a big row just for the image and rich text editor. Then I've just created two equally sized columns um, with help of uh, uh, Bootstrap. If you're familiar with the CSS library Bootstrap, you can see I've used it here, just to make it simple. And then here, so here is the important part. You see the CSS here, some text I've added. This may look um, a bit frightening in the beginning, but I promise you, super simple. And I just wanna go over, you see here that we have two other areas, a module CSS area and a module JS area. So I could write my, um, I mean CSS, my CSS here, but I can only write kind of a very generic, super simple CSS here. I can't leverage any Hubble variables and Hubble variables are just, you know, the values of these um, field input fields here. So if I want to use the background color, for example, to set the background color on uh, the main container, I can't use that background color variable in here. I can only write kind of normal CSS. So that's why I chosen to write my CSS here. So I haven't broken uh, any CSS yet since I wanted to go over how this works first. So to be able to write CSS directly in this HTML plus Hubble area, we need to add this require CSS tag, and of course an end require CSS tag. And this just makes sure that the code knows that everything inside here will be CSS. Then we can just add a, a normal style tag here. And here is the, the final tag here. We could actually, I could write my CSS directly here. So like main container, blah, blah, you know, normal CSS. But the reason I also use this scope CSS is just because this scope CSS just um, makes sure that all the CSS of right here um, is just used on this module. So for example, if I use this class name um, for another module and I didn't use this scope CSS, the CSS here will be um, used on that other module's um, main container as well. So to make sure that my CSS that I wrote for this module is only used on this module, I use this scope CSS. So now we can just write some simple CSS. I will write that quickly again, so you don't have to, yeah, see me do the whole process. Okay, dear, I've written some super simple CSS. You could see how that wasn't much at all, since this is a very basic module. Um, but now we could see how we could actually add that background color. So to add that background color, you know, that the user puts in here in the CMS, to actually, you know, use that value inside of our custom module to set that background color, we could go over here to actions, 
then just press copy value. Then we can just copy in that here. And then for color, we need to grab uh, the color. So for a color, have both opacity and the color. So in order to grab the actual color from this color um, here, I could just say uh, the variable name, then just dot color. And um, so the, this will just give me um, the hexadecimal um, code for this color. So that's it. This actually just makes sure that whatever color we put in in this field is will be used for um, this CSS attribute. So now we will see how we can actually grab the image and the rich text editor. So here we can just press actions again. Then for images and rich text editors, I recommend pressing copy snippet instead, because then we get a lot of free code since copy value only, yeah, as it says, we only get the value. But if you press copy snippet, we could press and um, copy the image in here. So copy. And you see here, we get a lot of free code that we don't actually have to need or need to kind of be aware of how it works. We just, this just displays the image um, with some alt text, with some loading options and stuff like that. But I won't touch it. We just leave it for default now because I usually do that and it works great. So now to use our rich text editor, we will do the same thing. We will just press actions, then copy snippet again, and then just paste it in here. So that's it. The, this is the only code we will need for this module. Just the um, two columns, a main row, and then just copy in um, the copy or the code for these input fields, and then write a very, very simple CSS here with the required CSS tag and yeah, using this back controller. So let's now see how we could actually see how this looks in the CMS. To create a testing page for a module, we could just navigate up here to marketing, press website, then website pages. Once we're in here, you could just press create, then just give it a name and press create page. And then just choose a template. I could just show you really quickly how that looks. So um, test press create page. Then just choose some uh, simple um, template. You can see here I got some clean pro templates and then just select template and that's it. Um, I've already created a testing page for a module as you can see up here. So I will just using this one. So to actually use our module, I will just refresh. So all the public or the changes that we published from module gets uh, um, used here. Then we could just press here and then just type in the label you gave for your uh, module. So I wrote custom module. Perfect. You could see it here. Now we could just drag that out here. And you can see we actually got um, the content that we put in. So now if I, for example, go in here to this rich text editor, go back down here and just hit, um, learn the basics of creating a You could see that those changes actually are being used in the CMS. And this is awesome because now we could actually create input fields and also connect them to the CMS. So, and also we could try changing the image here to surfing boards. You can see that changes as well. And we could try changing the background color to purple this time instead of orange. And you can see that this actually makes the changes occur here. And this is a very simple module that I've created, just an image, rich text editor and background color, but you can create much more advanced. You can use um, more JavaScript for more kind of functionality based uh, modules. And also you can drag in um, third party libraries as well. Um, but this was, this was just a quick tutorial to get you familiar with how to create, you know, your start creating your own custom modules. So yeah, hope you learned something. And if you have any questions about the content I just went over, you can leave those questions down below in the comments and I'm happy to answer them. So yeah, thanks for having me. Have a great day. See you later.